And in, at some stage, it actually suggests that members of parliament have got risks that they may be or they will have to be accountable to. However, we propose mitigation, but the assessment of those mitigations are the, at the level of, of members of parliament. And then, of course, we have the operational uh, risks. And um, the next slide talks about, no, stay on that one. Go back, stay on that one. Um, first one is that we have key institutional risks that are linked to the strategic, plan, the strategic par parliament strategy, or um, strategic outcome-based oriented, oriented goals as per the strategic plan of parliament. Then we have a strategic register that is developed as part of the strategy. And then the responsibility for that is strategic risk register, which lies with the risk management committee. We have the mitigations, which are updated um, on, this, on the risk registers, which we do quarterly. And then we do have a risk management unit, which facilitates the process. As I said, at least now we have a risk manager who will be coordinating that, working with the unit that has been in existence in parliament. I've spoken about the operational risks, and these are the ones that you find at a division level. Of course, some operational risks can move from operational to become institutional risks. Divisional managers are responsible for that. Um, they are risk, they have to manage those risks as they emanate from their operational plans. As I said that we have a risk compliance uh, officer and uh, we call it a risk manager, a risk and compliance because the two go together uh, to comply with the FMPPLA. We have to manage the risks that come emanate from the, from the strategy that we adopt as parliament. I have indicated that parliament has a enterprise wide risk management framework. We have a risk strategy and a risk policy which have been updated and they do get updated on an annual basis. We have the terms of reference that manage and guide the risk management committee which we update on a yearly basis. Um, and of course, we are going to be establishing a risk management forum, with, which now has got drafted in terms of reference. And we're happy to say the risk manager will pursue those uh, so that we actually have a risk management forum um, established by April 2021. To date, we've done ongoing training as we try to mature the level of risk in, in appetite in, 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 in the institution and just the level of maturing the risk management processes in the institution. We've had training. We are actually putting together an executive course for managers so that the risk, um, the risk management doesn't only sit with senior managers. We target a management forum, which is the middle management of parliament beyond the division managers, beyond the accounting officer so that each official is aware and actually understands the role they have to actually play in managing risk in parliament. The next two slides, um, honorable members, indicate a massive emerging risk. I say so because much as we've been looking at the risk, we've been looking at the risks that are around our strategic plan. This is an emerging risk because our strategic plan was informed by a particular budget and that plan was, strategy was adopted in both the houses. From June last year, we've had continuous reductions because of the, 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 the strain of the fiscus and of course the extreme impact of COVID on us. Um, we've had a deductions on reduced baseline budgets. And that slide just indicates to members that we do have a massive challenge in the next MTF in terms of the proposal of the National Treasury letter, which was received on the 5th of December, after the deductions were made in June, where the minister came to table a special adjustment budget, um, parliament had already been reduced by those amounts as shown, 80 million of which came from uh, various sections. Compensation of employees was 60 million. Direct charges, which obviously is a direct from the National Revenue Fund, we don't hustle much about that, but the goods and services and compensation of employees are the most worrying. Further to that, in the presentation of the minister's budget in February, um, it was indicated, it is a proposed reduction, it was indicated that at the end of three years, parliament's budget will be revised downward by 442,998 rents. And um, 
part of that comes from the compensation of employees. And I must say that compensation of employees in terms of that asterisk includes 100 million yearly of permit, meaning that for compensation of employees that goes down to 824 million. And then other items um, involving the goods and service and the reductions that are on the goods and services. We are highlighting this. We have a hyperlink in the presentation, which is, I'm not necessarily going to open it, but it is a letter, hold on. It's a letter that comes from National Treasury. The reason this is an opportune time and we are happy, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, that we are presenting the risk uh, strategy to yourselves. It is going to be important that Parliament strategize goals, revisit the strategy of the five years, reprioritize in terms of what is it that we can co-fund currently. That's the one. The next point is what is the risk of reduction on compensation of employees? I have to say we have sat down as managers and we've lo looked at the impact and we have had discussions with National Treasury uh, officials, obviously, on the fact that if there's an impact on compensation, it is going to mean we immediately consider uh, reducing the staff that is critical for Parliament to deliver on its mandate. The converse of that, we've been able to put together a framework that manages the wage bill. The reason why there's been such a deduction, a re reduced compensation of employees, precisely that what when you see our bill, our, our, our wage bill is sitting at 1.1, 1.2 billion if we include all the positions we want to fill. Um, and sitting there, what Treasury did was to reduce 10% across all of the, the executive, including the legislature. Um, but when the, the reductions were done, much as we communicated that you can't reduce compensation you know, against employees, um, it's, it, it's, it's just, we have done what we could, if I were to put it that way, that if you reduce employees uh, compensation, we are saying we must reduce the number of employees, we are actually implying that there must be um, retrenchment. We as officials in parliament have actually put together a voluntary retirement process. But even that voluntary retirement process will need an injection to release those officials who are willing to retire officially and obviously uh, voluntarily, I'm sorry, and in fact, guard against losing the skills that are critical for parliament. I'm raising this meeting because we have dealt with the level at which this committee should actually start focusing on unpacking the budget of parliament and ensuring that parliament finds a way of appropriating its budget. Uh, honorable members, if you look at vote two, and you look at the deductions in, as, as proposed by National Treasury, the, the compensation of employees has been reduced to 824 million. What it means is we short of about 505 million to sustain just the complement of staff that we have now without increases, without even talking about any other increases beyond what we gave as CPI interest. What it then does, as I said, we've sat down to say, First and foremost, we internally have to find ways of addressing the matter. Secondly, the Joint Standing Committee must actually unpack the strategy as tabled in the two houses, have a very informed discussion on how we reprioritize. And then maybe lastly for myself is the manner in which the Joint Standing Committee working with the executive authority can start, because this is called a proposed um, uh, reductions, start having high level discussions with national treasury at least on, in one area, to just sustain the salaries as they were without any cent increases, but not reduce it to a level where we can't pay ordinary salaries. Of course, the countenance of that is that we are looking at the wage bill. We are aware that we can use the resources in the institution much better. And as we speak, that we have a framework, I must repeat it, we have a framework where we're considering how we can revisit our joint, our job descriptions, how we can compact work, how we can um, offer for those who are willing to retire, um, voluntary retirement. And that's not a new thing. Two years ago, working with organized labor, there were people who were saying they are ready to be 
uh, retired voluntarily, but chairperson to release people you need to inject budget. And we have such a framework currently. We are raising, um, this is an emerging risk, let alone the COVID risk. And I must touch on the COVID risk. Uh, we do have a business continuity plan. And in the business continuity plan, obviously this was business continuity plan in its nature. It's locally based. The virus was never affected in the business continuity plan, but we now have learned a lot from COVID. We have now included in our business continuity plan how we manage disasters, how we establish committees and rapid response, how we ensure that the business of parliament work um, continues, the business of parliament continues. We have had hybrids that are working. We've invested in technologies for members. We've in addressed the data allowances for members. We've also supported staff that have got comorbidities working at home, um, giving them their remote gadgets, and we are doing work as we speak that ensures that members do have effective oversight and do public participation in the best manner possible. Chairperson, the next part, this is the end of my presentation. We, we have included annex shares in this strategy and I'm not going to talk to those annex shares. The annex shares just share with members the rating scales we use whilst we do assessment of the movement of the various uh, risks from likelihood to possibility to, uh, to rare, and we rate them in terms of the, the indices that we have there. So we also um, sort of give descriptions of the control levels that we put, like whether the level suggests that there's a damage or no damage, deficiencies, effectiveness, or excessiveness. Um, and then we have a heat map that we have put there for yourselves to just read. And what we're going to do going forward, Chairperson, we will be providing you with a summary of reports that tell you how we have managed risks on a quarterly basis and how we have identified new emerging risks on a quarterly basis. Thank you very much, Chairperson and honorable members. I will end here. The next slide says, thank you. We can move to the next slide. Thanks, Metrolo. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, the floor now is open for engagement, questions, comments. Um, can I now recognize hands? Mr. C, Mr. Khadebe, those are the two hands at the moment. Uh, Mr. Singh, you'll be the first, followed by Mr. Khadebe in that order. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good afternoon, colleagues, all colleagues from Parliament and honorable members. Uh, thank you for the presentation, ASTP. ASTP, just a couple of things. I can't recall if, if in the AG's report, which was presented to us uh, last week, whether they pointed out any risks that uh, uh, need to be ameliorated. So if you can just uh, refresh my memory with regard to that. Secondly, how are you going to mitigate the risk of extra resources that will be required? I think, well, perhaps it'll be in the 2025 financial year when members of parliament retire or resign. Now, perhaps it hasn't been factored in here because you know elections are likely to be after the end of the 2024 uh, you know, financial year. Then my Last question is, yes, we, we note the presentation on reduction. And uh, we, we've been talking about this underfunding for quite some time. But you said in the beginning that uh, risks have, are both positive and negative. Now, the positive side to risks that were unexpected is the savings that Parliament or this budget has incurred in the last year you know, savings on a number of items, flights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Have you factored in those savings and those likely savings over the MTF period when you, when you present to us the reduction figure? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Mr. Hadeba, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson and the members of the committee and the detachment of parliament. 
First of all, I'd like to appreciate the presentation presented by the acting secretary. Really, it is good that we have a clear strategy plan of dealing with risk management. But what is worrying me, Chairperson, is what is arising, not which is arising on, in particular on the issues of the budget. We know that the country is in a big hole. Ne? We have, as the people's representatives, we have sympathy with the people who are on the street, the people who are unemployed, the people who don't have anything sometimes on the table to go and feed their children. But what is worrying me with the presentation on particular on the issue of the, the budget is the issue of the above inflation increments which were agreed upon between parliament and the, and the staff. How, that, how, how will that help help the spirit of the South Africans when the, the tribune of the people, the parliament of, of the people, looks like it's taking care of itself than the people themselves? When we look at the budget which was presented the other week, the Minister of Finance was very clear that there are serious cuts on the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, of which that scheme is made so that the future of the country is guaranteed. The, the future labor force must have a better skills so that they can participate in the economy in a better way. But on the side, we are seen to be increasing as if we are feathering our nest. We are feathering our nest. And then how, how, how are they going to mitigate? How is the parliament going to mitigate against that risk? Because this, you know, parliament can easily suffer a reputational risk, a, a, a reputational damage. Ne? whereby the people are not going to take it serious because it looks like we are taking care of ourselves. On the issue of permanent, which was raised by the acting secretary, I think this problem has been here for quite a long time. We know very well that that problem arises because the members of parliament are forced to belong to this particular scheme because there's an act of parliament. I think that is it not a high time now that we amend, we amend that act so that it can be relevant. We cannot say people who are fighting for uh, the universal land or uh, uh, the NHI, who are fighting for the NHI where other people are going to, but at the same time, we were not leading by example, whereby we are retaining a, a very costly, costly medical aid. At the same time, it makes the, the finances of parliament. Actually, if you can look at the report of the AG, Actual parliament is no longer going, Israel is bankrupt, it's bankrupt. If you can filter in, filter in the expense of parliament itself. And then not speaking about the issue of the former members, in particular of the executive. Those members of the executive retired when they were in a particular department. It's not the high time when we go to the remuneration commission that so that if they exit, if a particular member of the executive exit, at a particular department, the issue of pension must be taken care of by that department so that this issue of parliament caring the former members of the executive, caring the legislatures must come to an end. But what is also very important, I appreciate the fact that the acting secretary said that we must reprioritize the budget, we must look very hard because we like it or not, it's high time that as the leadership of this country, we take hard decisions. Sometimes you must be hard in order to be good for the future. I, 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 I'll make an example here. Germany had to undergo two world wars and they had, to pay, they had to pay reparations. For them now to become the biggest economy in the EU is that they sat down, government, labor, business, so that they decided what they want for the future. But I think that here us as parliament, as parliament we must decide Really, I think that we must appreciate the situation the people of South Africa are in. We must appreciate the situation of the COVID-19 has unleashed to the economy of the country. So I think that it's high time that we sit down as parliament and look hard at the decision which we have taken. Well, let's look at the structure of parliament itself, the, the, the structure of parliament, the packs of the MP, the packs of the, the staff of parliament. We must look at those things so that at the end of the day, someone who's going to pay the VAT must not be angry that this VAT I'm paying is feathering other people's nest. Thank you, Chef.
the taxes are on as as people would normally refer to 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 us but bit le jaka di taxes are on um i i just need clarity on chair okay. i yes. my oh mouth okay yeah, yeah it's fine ma'am Okay, let me just, let me just go through the it's yourself, Umpile and uh, Mr. and Kaiso. Umpile Mautwe and Kaiso. It's fine in that order. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Let me also welcome the presentation, but I've got a, just a few questions from my side. Um, is it possible to have sight of the three documents that are cited on the presentation? the enterprise-wide risk management um, framework, the risk management strategy and the risk management policy. If you can have sight of that, that's one. Two, I do appreciate that um, the risk management committee is responsible for the overall risk management of the risks that would have been identified. But can we, given a, an indication of who deals with the risk register and how often is the risk register being updated and can you get a high level um, risks that uh, of priority that you would want the committee to to look at and then chair the 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 the, the issue about um, the reduction in terms of compensation it's a worrying issue for me. Uh, I don't know how we got it right that uh, the ruling party would go and say we'll create jobs, but it's the same ruling party now that is uh, shedding of jobs. I mean, when you start by saying people must take VSPs, you, we know our people, because there'll be an incentive that is a lump sum, they'll be tempted to take that VSP uh, because they want to um, sort out some immediate issues that they might have and not necessarily looking at the future of how things will turn out. So anything that seeks to talk to our people being relieved from duty, it's something that we will never support as the EFF. It must come out very clear. And we'll make a lot of noise about it because it is, it is this government that went to promise people that are going to create jobs. And now it's the same government that is now saying to people, please go home because we can't manage funds properly. It can be, can be correct, Chair, that it's, it's easy to say to people, go home, but we are failing to negotiate on other issues, contractual issues. I mean, we're buying equipment every day. Are we negotiating enough? Why are we not cutting out on the luxury of us flying to Cape Town all the time for no reason and rather save that money for the people and in the majority of these people is black people in, in parliament. So we'll never ever support anything that seeks to say to black people, please go home. Never, not now. I thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ma'am Mauto. And Tate Kaiso. Oh, that them Mulezani. That them Mulezani. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, very much. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Let me also join the colleagues to welcome the presentation. I just want to amplify what what um, um, the, the, my colleague have said about about the issue of uh, of the of the of the permit. Uh, this issue of permit it, uh, it always has been highlighted by the acting secretary in this committee, and she has been indicating that uh, for several times they've been trying to address this this matter that uh, at least so that they can be relieved of, from the burden. One still asking himself you now whether this 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 uh, uh, this act is still relevant in 2021. 
this one that Mr. Hadebe, Honorable Hadebe uh, mentioned, that that is forcing all the, the members of parliament to be done to, to permit. To permit. Uh, I think that uh, it is about high time to take the, um, the unpopular decision for the good cause. Uh, this is the direction that will help to relieve the, the parliament, the burden of, of, of permit. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got missed. Uh, I had to attend some uh, urgent matter just nearer me there. So, sorry, uh, Chairperson, for that. But my issue here, it's not a very long issue, but uh, I think it's. We, we, it's a very important issue, the issue of uh, to deal with the issue of a, a, a permit, you know, or a compulsory medical uh, scheme uh, for members. Uh, I think we must also be seen, you know, to be playing that role of a championing our own NHI you know, uh, so I think I'll support what my colleague, uh, uh, Honorable Peggy Hadebe is saying, to say, no, we definitely have to find a way to amend uh, that act, which makes the scheme so compulsory uh, uh, because, because it creates a burden to members, actually. Uh, uh, members do not have, you know, option given the economic situation that uh, it, it, uh, the country is facing and, you know, uh, so, and the background. <clears throat> so I think that is a, it will be a progressive move. Uh, also, we'll be trying to gradually adjusting to uh, 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 consciously to the mind that we, we are now want to gradually move off the issues of the medical uh, schemes, actually. So we have to tone down from that angle that, that members have gradual, you know, uh, different options as they exit to that so that we give actually NHI the, the proper takeover. So I don't know why there has to be, you know, a firm no move on this matter. So I think we have to be exemplary at this level also to show, no, no, no. We, we're now looking forward, but I'm not saying the medical scheme is a, is a, is a final option, but I'm saying we, we must play that uh, exemplary role as a parliament also, you know, we are prepared now to exit this thing called medical aid scheme, and we are looking forward to NHI. So, but at the same time, we must look at the cost, you know, uh, it's not viable for, for members, they must have option. But we can only do this only when we have amended the act itself. Uh, that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Um, Madam Chair, well, I think uh, Mr. Singh partly touched on, on this issue um, that um, the AG raised concerns about the non functionality. Of the of the audit committee, so I I want uh, maybe in the next meeting, in the next uh, presentation, we we should be given guarantees. It has been revived and and it is working. Um, members have spoken quite at length on the permit uh, matter. It must be resolved, uh, and 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 members must give must be given an opportunity to choose which medical aid would they want to belong to? Um, this this, this uh, parliament must resolve on that issue. Uh, but uh, we, we also would want timeframes on that because uh, we've, we've been forever talking about it. We are now going towards the second year in office. The permit has never been off of our agenda. So this matter, it has, it has to be resolved. I'll hand over to you so that uh, you respond and then we can move to the next item. I see, um, Honorable Chair, there's Honorable Matlow's hand. Oh, no, it wasn't. Thank you. Uh, sorry, 
Chair, over to you. Yes, Chair, I, I was saying that my hands was there. I was going to support what was uh, said by Honorable Khadewi, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, Ma. Chairperson, thank you very much. And thank you for the inputs, um, Honorable Members. Um, let me start off with the AG. In the AG's report, yes, Honorable Singh, there is a flag that says um, we are a growing concern. And it is even in our annual report. And it's been there for a while because we're carrying the permit liability. And having said that, we've raised the matter of the permit liability. We have explained to the executive authority that in terms of us officials, we've actually reached an excess where we can't do much about it. The chairperson of the board of the permit is the deputy speaker. In the last meeting, it was requested that he then um, creates a platform where there must be consultation around the act itself that has established permit from before, from during apartheid time. So this is an area where now members of the scheme itself, because it's a self-directed scheme, the board of members are members of parliament. So it's not an independent one. I must also say during the commission report last year or two years ago, the commission had actually looked at, when they were looking at the compensation of members and everything, they had an indicative uh, view on how the medical aid can actually be moved forward. Um, so it, it is going to be important, um, coaches, that maybe my proposal would be, in light of the fact that the deputy speaker is the chairperson of the board, maybe through the secretariat of this committee, we can submit to yourselves, and if you agree, a draft that says, in terms of what officials have done, this is what we have done. However, it's important that the next step be taken up by the Joint Standing Committee, and maybe that's a letter that the Joint Standing Committee chairs can send to the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, um, who's the chair of the Board of Parliament. Um, and then, of course, um, the deliberations are be becoming more polit political than uh, at an, an official level. So that, that's, that remains a risk, a risk because even where the CPI increases, we do not get that, 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 uh, that allocation has always been underfunded. And that is definitely a risk. Um, in terms of the retirement, whilst that is a direct charge, uh, loss of graduate, office graduate, it is a direct charge. But Honorable Singh, I think what is emerging is we never get, we either get less or more, but because we never know how many members leave office or will leave office as a result of the outcome of the elections. This is also a level, a, a, an area where the Joint Standing Committee discusses how it came about, what is the benefit of having um, loss of office gratuity, and if there are those benefits and are necessary, I am not the one to say that, honorable um, members, please, please um, do not um, misunderstand me. What we are advocating for, there are certain amounts that sit on the baseline of the parliament's budget and makes it look like it's big at 2.7 billion. When you scrutinize the budget, there are big amounts like your permit and entitlements of members, retirement, or office, loss of office gratuity. If those can be removed from our baseline, we will then know what is the cost of oversight, public participation and lawmaking in parliament in line with the constitution. Our budget doesn't tell us. Our budget gets allocated and then we realize that where there's critical need, um, the, we have to augment all the years we have had to augment. We were sitting with us um, official on uh, HRE and our CFO's office and we said, in fact, what we realize is over time, we've just been running the budget of parliament on overdraft. And it's actually a fast, an, an interesting way to look at how our budget has been distorted. So it's been distorted by the amounts that don't need to be sitting on our baseline. What are we doing as officials? We've been engaging and we are going to be intensifying the engagement with national treasury to take out those line items and make them belong where they should belong. Um, and then I want to go to Honorable Singh, you correct? We have currently 170 million unspent and it comes from indeed, we've reduced the overtime that we used to have, the travel, international travel, but that, that unspent, it's only for this year. Yes, it can complement the deficit, 
of the compensation of employees. However, even after using that, we still have a good shortfall of about 303 million if I look at the figures that colleagues have been uh, giving to, to ourselves. If we fill with all the, the positions that are, are vacant, chief audit executive, CFO, uh, secretary to parliament, and um, uh, um, head of security and content advisors. So part of what we're doing, we are all, all also scrutinizing the critical need for those positions. So we are definitely underspending at 178 70 million. We are going to be adding it there. We still have a shortfall. Um, the question of the, um, the packs of members, I don't think we as well, officials have the, the role to play there. It will be undermining the members. These are deliberations that must be held at the right forums. We can only uh, provide data to, to honorable members. It's quite important that we, 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 we really must be very observant of the role we should play as officials and uh, what members should actually take on because we don't want to straddle those, those lines. We don't want to bear the lines to, to I don't know the, word, the English word. Yeah, we, can, we don't want to blare the lines. Um, yes, um, Honorable Maudre, Maudre, yes. Um, we have given the Secretariat all the governance documents that should have been given to all the members, the policy, the enterprise white management strategy, and our strategy on implementation of, of this, the risk and compliance. We will include in our quarterly report to this meeting, the quarterly risk report that we always share with the audit committee, because there it shows emerging risks. It shows how we have mitigated certain risks, how some of the risks have to be um, accepted. And it's with the appointment of the risk officer, we will be sharing with you the risk maturity of parliament and dissect what roles members can play in certain areas of mitigating risks. So we will definitely be including that. Um, um, audit committee, Honorable Mabe, I think the audit committee, no, no, let me just not say I think, we do have an independent audit committee. That audit committee is appointed by the executive authority. I think what Honorable Member is referring to, it's the internal audit unit where there was issues about vacancies. We've done a skills map in that area. It's an area that being addressed. And I know that the two positions that were vacant have been filled. And of course, there is now going to be an appointment of the chief audit executive who will strengthen that area. And because internal audit is important to parliament, they assist us to identify uh, weaknesses in internal controls long before the, audit, the auditor general comes in. And the auditor general depends on their reports to see and to audit areas that are identified as weaknesses. And the next presentation, you will see how we are addressing some of the findings of the AG and give you a status report, which will go quite quick. That will be the next presentation. And in fact, if there are any deficits there, I think honorable members will raise them uh, with us. I, my, my staff, my, my managers can respond if there are certain things that I've missed out on. Um, if um, mm -hmm. yeah, given sorry, a sorry, yes, I, I wanted to say the functioning of the risk management committee. So yeah, you you are you are correct. Yeah, sorry, I, I wanted to say so. Um, can you also assure members that the documents were circulated? Um, there was that. Um, question that came with member Maute. Yes, I, I want to verify that as far as from our side, we did send the documents to the office of ma'am Cindy, but I'm certain that she can confirm that with our office. If not, we will send them immediately. Chairperson, it's not a problem. We have them. Um, good good okay. afternoon, MJ. Yes, I, I also spoke to Mayor Maute. They were first sent in distributed in November and then we shared them again on Tuesday. Thank you, Chair. I think I've addressed matters, but in, in case I haven't addressed any matter that a member has raised, 
Um, I think my my team my managers can assist if there is anything else through you, chairperson. Otherwise, um, in terms of time, we are done with the first presentation and the second one is going to go very quickly. Thank you so much, chairperson. Thank you, honorable members. Okay. Uh, it, it seems there are no issues from your, from your team. I don't see any hand. Nothing. No. Nothing, yeah. It means you've covered all. Um, can we then move to the next agenda item? Are you ready? Um, this is a wrong one. We're going to yeah, the, wrong one. This the, is the one that we just read recently. The audit action plan. Apologies, apologies. All right, um, this is just an update. Um, when the committee met with the Auditor General, we were asked to, to submit um, how we monitor the implementation of the outcomes of the AG. Um, and in fact, the Act does say that um, the, the matters raised by the Auditor General in an audit report have to be addressed immediately. Um, and then, of course, we have to advise the executive authority on the steps that we've, ta we've taken. Can we move on? The next slide. Um, yes, Metawa, I'm just experiencing a difficulty. I'm going to try to sort it out just a minute. Okay, sure. Um, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to ask Cindy to take over if she can, while I try to sort it out. Cindy Mtembu, can you take over? Chairperson, I'm going to ask the Chief, Acting Chief Audit Executive to go through the presentation and to do that with speed. Um, Romeo, can you just go through the presentation without reading slide by slide, over to you. Uh, thank you, Acting Secretary, and good afternoon, honorable members and uh, chairperson. In terms of the process that we take um, to prepare the audit action plan, we um, consolidate all the audit findings as soon as the AG finalizes the work that they've done, and usually that happens in August. However, because last year um, we had the challenges of the pandemic, which affected both parliament and the AG. We, we started the process a little bit late. However, we've uh, finalized the preparation processes. And in terms of the audit findings, we also analyze the internal control deficiencies as identified by the AG um, to try and identify some of the root causes that were picked up during the audit. And in cases where those uh, are not adequate, we perform a thorough root cause analysis uh, as internal audit um, together with management uh, where the issues have been raised to make sure that we, we really go to the root of, of, of the issue to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And then we also consult a number of stakeholders when we prepare the uh, audit action plan. And that includes the audit task team, the relevant line manager, and then the final um, stage is actually consulted with the management team. And then we usually finalize this process by uh, mid-September. Um, however, as I indicated, we, we've had challenges in the past year. 
And in terms of the actual findings, we had a total of 14 findings that were raised by the AG distributed as per the graph that's indicated. However, it's important to note that none of the issues that were raised resulted in material misstatements in the financial statements or material uh, compliant, non-compliance with laws and regulations. So you'll see in the graph there that in terms of compliance with laws and regulations, there were two issues. Um, I'm just taking the, the, the ones with high numbers. And then the audit of predetermined objectives, there were three issues. And then on contract management, there were two, and then two on ICT controls. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, in terms of the details around the issues uh, on the non-compliance with laws and regulations, um, there were two issues. The first one being the late submission of the financial statements. And the second one is the invoices being paid uh, within 30 days. The action plan that has been taken around the um, uh, finalization of the financial statements and submission of the same uh, on time is that firstly, um, legal opinion um, was provided by the Constitutional and Le Legal Services Office um, in terms of how to effect section 65Q and section 65.6 of the FMTPLA in the event that we find ourselves in the same situation. Because what happened was that um, in terms of the PFMA, um, government departments and relevant entities were able to obtain an extension in terms of the submission deadline due to the um, COVID-19. However, in terms of parliament, um, we did not have um, that extension, hence AG raised the issue. However, we've now since made sure that in the event that we find ourselves in a similar situation, uh, the EA is able to, to issue these regulations for approval by parliament. And those regulations have been prepared um, and submitted to, to the EA. And the second part of it um, is the operational aspect of it, where we've gone back as an institution to review the business continuity plan to include steps to activate responses to national disasters. And that is because our BCP was uh, very focused around localized disasters and, and scenarios. And then on the invoices being paid within 30 days, um, we've implemented controls where division managers monitor the payment of invoices on a monthly basis. And also a dashboard showing the age analysis is presented to the acting um, Secretary to Parliament on a monthly basis to effect corrective action. Next slide. And then on trade payables, employee benefits and asset management, um, there, were one, there was one issue in each of those. Under trade payables, it was just an issue of an incorrect invoice number that was reflected in the financials. That was corrected um, during the submission of the uh, financials. However, management have, in addition to that, uh, implemented a control on a monthly basis just to reconcile the invoice numbers to make sure that this doesn't happen again. On employee benefits, this actually related to members of parliament. However, in terms of the uh, SCOA accounts, uh, it's, it's still reflected as employee benefits. And this related to the, um, the valuation of the travel benefits of members, where our database in terms of the active members included some of the members that had passed on. And in terms of the action for this one, uh, we did address it at the time. However, the institution decided to implement further controls through validation of um, whether members have passed on or not and also um, established relationships with uh, the Department of Home Affairs, noting that uh, we may not have all the information about deceased members. And then on heritage assets, um, there were some assets that were only um, found based on their description and not the, the barcode. So these are all operational matters. Hence, if you look at the AG report, it will talk to it being under administrative issues. You can move on to the next slide. On human resources, um, there were two issues. The first one um, dealt with a disclosure issue 
where in terms of our disclosure, we included the acting allowances and group life benefits incorrectly as basic remuneration. That was addressed during the audit um, in, in the relevant notes. And over and above that, we will make sure this year that when the financial statements are prepared before um, submission, we relook at those mappings. And then in terms of leave liability, for employees that come from government departments um, that join parliament, we currently recognize the leave that they might have carried over from that side into parliament. Um, as a result of that, um, when the AG recalculated, they found some uh, misstatement. However, that was due to the fact that in terms of our HR policy, it's not very explicit to say we recognize um, leave accumulated within uh, public service when they come into parliament. So the action there is that the HR policy manual will be updated. And I know um, that management are in the process of, of addressing this um, because it has been circulated to all staff for further inputs. Next slide. And then on contract management, there were two issues. Um, the first one related to some suppliers that submitted false or incomplete declarations at the time of award. Um, this related to some uh, people that were identified to be employed by the state in terms of the work that the AG has done. Um, the action plan um, that has been agreed to, which has um, already in the process of being implemented. Um, firstly, management will ensure that um, all documentation is available for the AG um, at the time of audit. Um, notwithstanding the fact that I think the audit last year towards the end was, was a very difficult one due to the pandemic. And then secondly, um, recommendations will be made in the review of the FMPPLA to include a measure to prohibit public servants from doing business with parliament. And that's due to the fact that there's a misalignment between the Public Service Act and the FMPPLA simply because of, of the timing issue when uh, the Public Service Administration changed the, the act. And then the last one uh, was the contract register, which um, has been resolved and agreed to with the AG. Um, members, the issues that relate to the performance information or the audit of predetermined objectives in the next slide. There are about three issues that were raised. Um, and I'll just talk to the management action because the action will address all the issues that have been identified um, that related to inaccurate performance. Um, some of the listings were not accurate and in some areas, the evidence was not sufficient. Um, in terms of this, the action that management has undertaken so far was that the workshops were held with the data capturers in each division to improve both the format and quality of data for usability. And as part of that, there were some instances where some descriptors had to be revisited, um, where, for example, there are verbal requests that are submitted by members and there's no recording of when the request came in. So um, that workshop actually addressed uh, procedures on how we can continue to service the member and make sure that we have a record of when the request came in. And then secondly, to improve overall performance information and the evidence that relates to it, a performance data forum has been established to ensure uh, adequate preparation of uh, data for reporting purposes at each and every um, reporting cycle. Honorable members, I will not go through the last issues on information technology, simply because it was not critical matters that were raised. It was just um, issues that needed to be noted. Uh, because the AG did find that there were controls. However, they were concerned about uh, them being, being um, formalized through a policy. I will end there. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, thank you. We finished with our presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are impressed, actually, that uh, we've never asked for, for this uh, 
item, but uh, you became proactive and 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 organized it, prepared, and and table it before the committee. I think one thing that we also need to comment you on as Parliament, we need to lead by example. Thirty days of payment of, uh, I mean, payment of service mm. providers within thirty days. Um, something that uh, we need to lead by example and make sure that uh, Parliament also follows the same 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 same, same <coughs> action of paying the service providers uh, within the prescribed uh, acceptable time. Um, I think for me there are no issues generally because of uh, this other uh, 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 steps that we have taken after the auditor audit 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 general has, has raised certain issues so um for me yeah it's a straightforward um presentation that needs monitoring yes definitely will continue to monitor as to whether you're going to comply uh, and this is the only way that you can win uh, the auditor generals uh, uh, that this is the only way that you can win and get the clean audit report with no findings at all. You know, once you are able to pick issues, uh, mm -hmm. have a committee that then makes follow-ups and 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 monitor and checks, make checks on 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 on, on issues raised. You will definitely get it to uh, to the to the right track. Um, let me see. I also don't see any hands. I think members do accept that uh, it's a straightforward presentation. Mr. Molazzani just raised his hand. Are there any other hands members? I won't be recognizing hands after Mr. Molazzani uh, because I want us to be within uh, this last 15 minutes. We should then try to go through our minutes while we're still correcting. And at 1.30, we can then release those members that had other prior commitments. Dr. Molazzani. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just want to say it's a sort of a clarity here on that issue of the invoices uh, that uh, those invoices that are not paid within 30 days, how mm. often does it happen? And, uh, and what can be the reason uh, that, may, that can cause the delay except during the, the lockdown? Mm. Thank you. Let me check again. No. Yeah, that's the only question from Tatem Letza. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. The the major um, invoices that were not paid, and uh, Honorable Letza, you correct, it wasn't necessarily on, only during COVID. We found out that there was a lot of pressure around the committee work when where staff would go from one oversight activity to the other when they were doing the exception, the review of the constitution and the whole range of public participation um, activities. So we picked that up and also during that time, there was, um, I think, a nobody acting in that section to ensure that um, invoices are coordinated and are paid on time. The third one was, there were certain invoices that were queried by ourselves and we had to make sure that we don't create a problem over a problem, pay wrong invoices and then come back to actually correct them. And then we would have trouble recouping the money. The last one was duplication of invoices. I must reiterate that once we realized the division manager in that area set a process where she actually went through all the committee's areas, reestablished the responsibility for each of the head, the, the, the committee secretaries, as well as people who have to manage the payment to do it and do it immediately. I can tell you that now um, in the report we got, we only have 247 invoices that are in the system, not paid, but still under 30 days. Um, one or two of them are about 31 days. Um, so we, we definitely did have a crisis that we, we had to address very quickly. And it was really the, the impact of uh, people being away from the offices and remote connectivity was also a problem because our system uh, VPN accessing workflows outside parliament was not as, as efficient as it is now. 
and some of us don't know how to use this gadget. Even if ICT helps us, we just don't know how to connect each time we miss out on passwords. So there were quite a lot of technical things that we needed to address, but also the human factor of just having a lot of work during that time. Thank you very much. Um, I must reassure the committee that uh, it is past history because we cannot um, impact on our clean audit for six, six times we've had six clean audits. We cannot impact it differently by just doing something that is so easy to do, ensuring that when you are not in the office, uh, refer your work to, else, to somebody else to assist you. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my baby Jawa and your team. Um, Cindy, can we quickly in this last 10 minutes, please may I deal with the minutes? Okay, yes, Chair. Um, I'll put last week's one on first. While we're still correcting, I'm just uh, taking this advantage of a quorum. Let me just find the minutes. Because the rules require that uh, we should correlate for us to adopt the minutes. Yes. Um, so this is last week's set. Last week's set. Can we go to those present? Uh, Mr. Pre oh, Tim. Muletani. Nyambi. Apology. Hai. Absent. None. N A Ma B Lisuma Kaiso Hadebe Mr. Julius Maute, Mr. Singh, uh, apologies from N A Jakude. Oh, Mr. Sheikh Imam, absent Mazoni, and then let's go again. And these are the minutes. So these are the short minutes that we do because we're going to be adopting a report. No, no, you are moving too fast. Oh, too you're far. moving too fast. Yeah, you're too fast. You're too fast. Are we going page by okay. page? Go down, go down, go down now. Okay. You can go down. I hope members are able to follow. Go to the actual minutes. These are the actual minutes. Yes. Stop. Um have this need been circulated to members? Yes, Chair, they were circulated on Wednesday. Okay. Members, can we check if there are any corrections first? None. Uh, can we then get a mover as a true reflection? of what transpired in this meeting. A mover for minutes. I move, Chairperson Singh. Mr. Singh moves. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Can we get a seconder? Lesoma seconds, Honorable Chair. Malisoma seconds, thank Julius. you very much. Hello, Julius. Okay, Chair. You'll do that in the, sec in the next set of minutes, Mr. Julius. Apologies, Chair. I'm just. That's fine. That's fine. Just relax. Okay. Just relax. It'll be easier for me to find them here. Okay. In fact, I like this way of working, you know. It sharpens your thinking skills. <laughs> Yeah, there's no time to page through papers. In fact, even when we go back to parliament, this is how we should work. We are moving, we are moving towards a paperless uh, institution. We must just insist on this. We must use the my app, parliament app. Thank yeah, you. no, we must. We must. In fact, we must because no one is getting uh, hard copies at the moment. We are all using electronical. Uh, so, mum, mum, baby, chawa, it's a proposal, ne? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, it's a proposal that we must move towards this. Uh, we know that printing, 
we can't just shut it down overnight. It means money for other people, but as part of saving costs, we need to move towards this. Everybody now in nine provinces, we are all able to follow, do our work uh, using the electronic system. So even going back to parliament, this is what we need to do. Okay, let's go through the attendance register. Mahlangu, Tim, Muletani, NCOP, Apologies, Nyambi, and Rai, NA. I did not see present. present. In the NC NCOP, yeah. let's go back. Present in the NCOP. Oh, it's Mahlangu. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Members are here. They can also see for themselves. Let's go to NA, Mabi. Lesoma, Kaiso, Kadebe, Julius, Maotwe, Singh, Kude, Apology, Maso. How can you say Maso is absent? There's no way Maso can be absent in a meeting. <laughs> I, I, I object on her behalf. I really support that chair. I'm, I'm, I was never absent. Maso, what okay, happened? Yeah, you came late, ne? Yes, I came late, but I was in the she meeting. She was there. Maso was hmm. there. No, I. I they must no, not Maso, not member Maso. Member Maso mm -hmm. is very consistent, mm -hmm. and given the fact that she's also an alternate in this mm -hmm. committee, so and commitment. I'm trying my best. No, you are, you are, you are. That's why I'm fighting for you. Don't worry. Can we record? Right. Can we correct that? Member Maso was present. Member we'll Maso was present. We'll verify against the registers and we'll correct Jay. Okay, it's fine. All right, let's go down again. Move, move, move. Uh, all right. Actual business. Are there we... any corrections, yeah. members? Cindy, move yes. a bit slower. Yes, ma. The correction will be uh, for member so to be not uh, written there on absent. Yeah, that no, is that the... one has been noted. Thank you. On the content. Is there any member who'd want to point any correction? None. Can we then get a mover for the adoption? I move for the adoption of the minutes as a correct true reflection of the meeting. I'll second member Maslow. Member Maslow moves, uh, member Julia seconds. Person, um, just, yes. just, just a request until we verified with our registers, could another member perhaps move for the adoption? No, they have already. Yes, but we're not. That, okay. Member Mato, oh, until we get that, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then I'll Julius, Julius, Julius is moving, Tim is seconding. Just so you know, I'm awake, Jay. I'm the yes. 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 Um, yeah, he caucus there, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in agreement? Cindy, did you capture yes. that? Yes. Okay. Members, uh, we have Six minutes. Is there any issue that members would want to raise, maybe for the future uh, agenda items? Though we would we would request that if you have any any issue that you'd want uh, to be raised or to be discussed, that you do that in writing. But I want to take this opportunity just to open the floor for anything that members would want to raise. Uh, Chairperson. Uh if I may come in, you, yes. you, perhaps at the next meeting, and you know, our committee uh, works with Parliament and how they operate. Perhaps we can just get a briefing on uh, Parliament's readiness to accommodate more members uh, in terms of how level one goes and the readiness okay. of committee rooms, etc., for uh, physical uh, presence in in Parliament. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think if this committee can get that kind of briefing as well, so we can see where the challenges are. Okay. 
Any other member noted, Mr. Singh? Thank you. Yes, Honorable Chair, it's Lesoma. Chairman. I had my hand up. Yes, Ma Lesoma? No, we are requesting based on what uh, 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 Ms. Chalai presented as well. If uh, they, you can check with the Office of the Deputy Speaker uh, in one of our scheduled meetings that he come and take the committee in confidence in terms of the permit issue, in terms of us as members having a choice on that. It has been an ongoing issue. We would love to get the status uh, report on that regard, Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another member? Chairperson Julius, yes, uh, can I, I know we get the, uh, uh, the annual report and then uh, the expenses and uh, everything is uh, uh, discussed uh, from the latest uh, State of Nation address. But I think this year was a bit, uh, 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 you know, with COVID and everything, uh, it changed a bit. Can I request that, uh, because I did ask it in, in Chief of Forum and in, in, in uh, other forums, uh, but it was said that we will get it. Can we get uh, uh, an expenditure and income, uh, expenditure statement on the State of Nation Address 2021, please, uh, in the next meeting? Thank you. But the actual breakdown of how much has been spent Yes. For this current, for this current uh, state of the nation. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. Um, any other member who would wish to propose? Okay, that's fine. Those are the four requests, Mam Jawa. Mejawa, are you still on the platform? Yes, I'm still here. I can hear that. Uh, thank you so much, Chairperson. We'll do that. Uh, from our side, I really think this committee must receive a, strat a revision of the strategic plan because okay. it's this committee that exercises total oversight on the parliament's strategy and budget so that there is real focus on... Uh, Chairperson, you know, that two years, a year ago, uh, I think some honorable members will remember. Um, in the past, there was something called the Budget Council, which was mm. under the, the POA, before the Joint Oversight Committee established now. That Budget Council used to look at the allocation we received from Treasury. We would then present as officials to say, in terms of the adopted strategy, this is, these are the key drivers of the budget. These are the priorities. And I just think there's a gap there. That is why we come to you and say, no, you know, in a panic, uh, Treasury has, has taken away money because you then need, you are able to look at vote two as the operational budget of parliament to say, is it sufficient? Is it having difficulties? And we don't have that kind of thing. So to me, um, we think that it's important that this committee becomes like when portfolio committees get a presentation from a department to say, here's our budget, here's our APP, here's our key drivers. Uh, yeah, the big budget drivers, but here's our priorities. I think it's important now that we have this crunch time of how we're gonna manage the costs, given the reductions. Um, to me, that's, that's gonna be very, very important. And in it, it will include expenditure on SONA because members will say, there's no more need to prioritize this area. Can you move that budget there? Then, of course, the decision makers find out in terms of the FMPPLA on the budget issues and the strategy is the executive authority. That's my proposal, Chair, and I think I'm appealing to members to through your office to say when can that time be, because it will need an allocation of at least three hours, just that one item on the agenda. Which Thanks. item that, that needs three hours? The, I'm saying the strategic uh, revision uh, oh. aligned to the currently allocated. Fine. We'll plan proper. We'll plan. We'll plan for that. It's fine. Thank we'll you. plan. Yeah, we'll plan. Maybe we can take it over. We can do it over. Uh, maybe three days. We can try do that. Maybe or two days. We'll over be kind of kind of Jefferson. But yeah, the other we'll members, try. I have noted them. Thanks. No, we'll try. We'll, don't worry. We'll 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 talk to members about it. Okay. Thanks. Um, we've noted all the issues that members would want uh, the committee to, to discuss. Uh, please prepare that. 
uh, from the next meeting, let's at least have one issue that, that was raised by members. And then we'll try to cover them over a, a period of time, if possible, two items at a time, depending on the availability and the time. Members, I don't want to waste any further, any more of your time. I want to propose that we, we close the meeting. The meeting is Thanks, officially closed. You're welcome. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, friends. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, and have a good weekend, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Hai. Thank you. You are, you are early now for your appointment. Thank you, yeah. Chairperson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mama so. Now, now for an early Bye. Bye. The road first. Oh, in the not tomorrow. Ah, today, this afternoon. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, bye bye. Okay, bye bye. See you there, okay, much. So, so bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, um, Bindi. Bye, Good. No problem. Goodbye, Chairperson. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mamjawa. Bye. Bye.